Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with bacon wrap spring chicken. That's right, no matter the season or the seasonings, stuffing a chicken breast with something delicious and then wrapping it in bacon is never a bad idea. Since it turns the super boring, please wake me up when it's over a piece of poultry into something significantly more exciting. And that's going to be the case no matter what you end up putting inside. So this is one of those videos where we're really going to focus on the method. And that method starts by making a stuffing, which we'll begin by adding a whole bunch of sliced spring onions to a little bit of butter in a pan set over medium-high heat. Oh, and by the way, these are called spring onions in the spring. The rest of the year, they're referred to as scallions or green onions. And then we'll also add a little bit of diced jalapeno, or the pepper of your choice. And then we'll also do a little bit of minced garlic, as well as a very generous pinch of salt. And then what we'll do is take our freakishly small wooden spoon and cook the stirring for about three or four minutes or so, or until our vegetables just start to soften and sweeten up. All right, as you might already know, you don't want to stuff crunchy, undercooked vegetables into a chicken breast, because if you do, the meat's probably going to be cooked before the vegetables are tender, and then we have problems. So we'll make sure they're relatively tender at this point. And then once we've decided those are cooked long enough, we'll go ahead and transfer those into a bowl, where we will let them cool until they're just barely warm, or room temperature, either way. And then what we'll do once that's cooled down a little bit is go ahead and crumble in some feta cheese. Or if you want, you can use that other cheese. What's the one I'm thinking of? Oh yeah, literally any other cheese. And the reason I'm using feta is because I had it left over from the kachapuri video, which apparently is pronounced hachapuri. And by the way, do you people making up words? If you don't want me to pronounce the K, maybe don't start the word with it. But anyway, continuing on, we'll go ahead and add some freshly chopped herb. Okay, some parsley and thyme would be nice here or whatever you're into. We will also do some freshly ground black pepper and a little shake of cayenne. And then last but not least, a spoonful of fine dry breadcrumbs for a little bit of moisture absorption. And that's it, we'll go ahead and stir, smash, and smear that together until everything looks a little something like this. And then once that's been accomplished, we can set that aside and we'll move on to prep our chicken. And what I have here are two fairly bodacious eight ounce breasts which ideally still have the finger or tenderloin attached. And the reason we want to kind of identify where those are is that we're actually going to make our incision on the opposite side of that. And before we do this, or really anything else in life, we want to sort of visualize what's going to happen and visualize success. And what's going to happen is we're going to poke the knife straight in, and we'll use that incision point as sort of a fulcrum while we slice with the tip of the knife inside to form the pocket. That way we'll have a lot of room inside to stuff without making the opening too big. All right, so we'll push the knife in somewhere near the center. And then we will use the tip of the knife to slice a pocket inside, almost all the way to the back and then almost all the way to the front. But while we're doing that, we're being conscious not to make the opening too big. And that way, when we're done slicing, we should have a nice big pocket inside, but with only a couple inch opening on the outside. All right, so that's the goal. And like I said, it's much easier if you visualize it first. And by the way, I should probably be doing these on a cutting board. Doing them on this plate with a lip was not that easy, which is why I went piggyback on the second one. But anyway, bottom line, we're going to go ahead and cut a pocket into each of those, ideally keeping that opening to about two inches or less. And then what we'll do once that's set is go ahead and fill these with our stuffing. And by the way, there is no elegant or graceful way to do this. Just grab some and shove it in. And as we're doing this, we want to make sure we're pushing it all the way to the back, as well as all the way to the front filling the entire length of the pocket we created. And even though a small opening makes it harder to get it in, I really think it's going to make for a better experience, since there's going to be less chance our filling comes out. And yes, even if it's wrapped in bacon, if that opening's really big, it's going to come out. So this could take an extra minute compared to having a giant slice on the side, but it's going to be worth it as you'll see. So I went ahead and stuffed both breasts as shown. And if you can't fit all the stuffing in, don't worry. All right, just hang on to it. We'll go ahead and put that in the bottom of our pan. But before we do, we'll go ahead and season these on both sides with a mixture of kosher salt, freshly ground black pepper, and cayenne. Or, of course, any other seasonings or spices you want. I mean, you are after all the Charles Dickens of your bacon-wrapped spring chickens. So please use whatever you think will make for the best of times. And then, once these are seasoned, we can go ahead and wrap them in bacon. And depending on the size, you might need two, three, or four strips. I only ended up needing two, because my bacon was long and thick. And besides trying to achieve almost total coverage, 
we really want to try to have the ends end up on the bottom. All right, otherwise when it bakes and contracts, they're going to spring open. So if you have to cut your pieces, go ahead. But if at all possible, make sure those ends are tucked underneath. And we do want these wraps snugly, but don't do them super, super tight. And of course, having the hole where we stuffed it covered is also a very good idea. And then what we'll do once those are wrapped is transfer those into a pan that's been very lightly greased with olive oil. But before we do, if we had any extra stuffing, just go ahead and add it to the pan. And that way we can place our chicken on the top and no one will be the wiser. And that stuff will hopefully caramelize and add a little extra goodness to the pan. And I should mention, you can roast these in anything that's oven safe. But the nice thing about using a saute pan is that once these come out of the oven, you can use it to make a beautiful pan sauce. But anyway, once we're happy with how those are situated, we'll go ahead and transfer this into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes or until safely cooked through and hopefully looking like this. Oh yeah. Oh, and if you only remember one thing from this video, let it be this. Anytime we take a pan with a handle out of the oven, we always place a towel on the handle and we leave it there until it's not hot anymore. Otherwise, there is roughly a 100% chance you burn yourself. And then you remember that thing I said about a pan sauce? I didn't do that here, mostly because I had like 15 minutes of daylight left. So what I did was squeezed in some lemon juice, which I used to deglaze the bottom. And lemon juice plus bacon fat plus chicken pan drippings will make a very fast and delicious sort of pan sauce for this. And yes, of course, between shots, I made sure I scraped and stirred in all that caramelized goodness from the bottom. And once that was set, I went ahead and served up next to some beautifully seared prop asparagus. And please note, I could have served the perfect one, but I decided to go with the one that had the slight rupture, just to show you that is no big deal. And I went ahead and spooned over some of those beautiful pan drippings, which because we didn't do a proper pan sauce are not emulsified, but fantastic nonetheless. And that's it, my bird was ready to bisect. So I went ahead and cut through the thickest part so you could see what was going on. And what was going on was this, a beautiful, moist, juicy chicken breast filled with our beautiful, green, spring-inspired stuffing. And that, my friends, really was extraordinarily delicious. And I really think would be no matter what you put in there. Thanks to, of course, our bacon. And when you wrap something like this in bacon, it never really gets super crispy because there's just too much moisture involved. But the trade-off to that not being super crispy is that you end up with an extremely flavorful, not dry chicken breast, which is not the easiest thing to pull off. So I really do love this technique. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling bacon wrap spring chicken. Like I touched on earlier, above and beyond the specific ingredients you use, this video was really about mastering the technique, which is really not that difficult to pull off. All right, the bacon here does most of the heavy lifting. So no matter what you end up stuffing into yours, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.